Hello there, Suzuki owners. Captain Dave here up in the Jetty Wolf one more time. And I wanted to discuss something with you that you may not know, especially if you're a new Suzuki owner. Well, you could be an old Suzuki owner. It doesn't matter. What I'm talking about is Suzuki outboards. Mine is a DF250. All right, I got a brand new one. It's a 2020 black and I got it on May 8th, but still, I had a 2014 prior to that. And I still have the old Suzuki gauge. I don't have the square one. There's a new one that's square. I also have the fly-by wire. So when I got repowered, we didn't change anything. I still have this round Suzuki gauge, I still have the same binnacle, same fly-by wire, same uh, entire wiring harness, same everything. And I was looking through some of my paperwork that I carry on the boat from my charter business, and I thought for a second, huh, I wonder if, or I wonder how many people know about what I have written down on a piece of paper. And the reason I have it is because it's one of those things that, again, no matter what, the more you know, the better off you are. What I actually have here is a list of the Suzuki codes. Malfunction codes. I don't know what else to call them. When you get a code up on your doesn't matter if you've got the old round gauge or probably the new square gauge it doesn't matter all these codes seem to be the same all right one of the most common codes that you'll get with any four stroke and a Suzuki for sure I've had it on practically every engine I've ever owned that was seriously modern it started with the Yamaha HPDIs. I had a bunch of those. And you always got an O2 sensor code. Now, I've had O2 sensors fail. And when the O2 sensor fails, it failed so miserably that, let's say if I was running normally down the river or something, I would get... Take a wild guess. 11 gallons an hour. Well, when it really failed really bad, for whatever reason, I'm not a mechanic. I just play one on YouTube. Uh, my gallon per hour ran up to like 19 to 22 gallons per hour on my gauge, my multi-gauge. Everything on my gauge is from tack to you know, any codes to uh, fuel flow, gallons per hour, engine temperature. Uh, I could have any kind of stuff plugged into this, but I've got the bare, bare bones basics, right? Uh, I have trim and tilt. Uh, what else is on here? Voltage. All your real basics that you need just to get by. I don't have it connected into anything else. I believe I have my gauge talking to my Garmin. I can run whatever's on my gauge here pretty much up on my Garmin too. So that gives you a little background. What I have here is written down all the codes that you could possibly get for a malfunction. And why is this important? Because as a mechanic or somebody said to me a while back, today's engines giving you these codes is actually informing the operator, owner, which is you, more than you've ever been informed in your entire boating career. Because back in the old days, you could ask somebody, hey, what, what temperature does your engine run? People go, I don't know. When a red light goes off, I guess that means it's overheating. You know, that kind of stuff. You could ask people 20 years ago, 
Hey, how many gallons per hour do you burn? Well, I go out with 18, and I come back every every trip with eight still in the gas tank. People don't even know. They didn't know. And there's a good and there's a bad with that, according to this mechanic that I was talking to. So you've got codes, and it'll range anywhere from a code that's called a 3.6 or a 3-6. That's your most common. That's really your most common, which is an O2 sensor. What is an O2 sensor? An O2 sensor is the thing the EPA makes these people put on all these new outboards, okay? It's an emissions piece of crap, and it goes out no matter if it's the check engine light in your new vehicle or if it's the 3.6 code on your brand new Suzuki. It doesn't matter. They're pretty much garbage from what I understand. My mom was getting her engine in her old Pontiac Sunbird, like 1990 Pontiac Sunbird. She was getting the engine completely rebuilt and put back in her car. So we went to go pick it up at this shop that does all these rebuilds. And on the counter in there, you know, they have those big, like, pads, counter pads that just lay there with some kind of advertisement on it. And I just so happened to have my engine... And my boat in a shop across the highway, about a quarter mile, half a mile away from this shop where my mom's car was. And it was in there for an O2 failure, O2 sensor failure that was recalled because they knew they were crap, okay? And they were replacing them for free, even if you had an out-of-warranty engine or whatever. Well, I looked down at one of those pads that's on the countertop in this man's shop. And there's an, it's a pad that's an advertisement for O2 Sensor Company. Well, I turned to him and I said, man, you are in the engine business. From parade rest to out the door, right? He goes, yep, yep, yep. I said, what's up with these O2 sensors constantly failing? And he was just an old mechanic guy that ran this business. And he looks at me and he goes, man, all these things are cheap Chinese junk that the EPA makes you put on there. It's all a bunch of emissions BS. You know, I got this, that's like the straight scoop from him. And I went, isn't that funny? Because my outboard is across the highway at the shop getting the O2 sensor change. So there's just an example, okay? That's one of a million examples. Okay, well, the next one would be a 6.3. O2 sensor heater. Crickets, crickets, crickets. I don't know what the hell that is. The next one would be a 3.4 map sensor. Now, I've heard of a map sensor in vehicles. Okay, I can't really remember what that means. Manifold air pressure sensor, I believe is what it is. Then there's a 3.1, an IAC valve. IAC valve. I've heard of it, but I don't know what that stands for. Then there's another simple one here. Cylinder temp, a 1.4. Then you go to a 2.3, an IAT sensor. Don't know what that is. Then there's a 2.2, air intake. Then a 1.5, Starboard exhaust temp, 1.6, port exhaust temp, 4.3, a fuel injector. You get a fuel injector failure, and you get beep, 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 beep on your gauge, your multi-gauge, and it's a 4.3, then you already know it's a fuel injector because your engine's probably going to run like total crap. Okay, 2.5 or 2.1 throttle position sensor. That means that most likely somewhere in the system that your throttle, you're pushing it one place and it's sensing or being adjusted in a different place back there. Okay, I would assume that's pretty much it. 1.2. So that, the throttle position sensor was a 2.1. Now 
Now we're at a one uh, uh, or a two dash one, excuse me. And now we got a one dash two. Shift position sensor. So same thing. You could have it turn, you do something up here, and it's sensing a totally different thing back there. Okay, a six point or six dash one. Starboard oil control valve. Well, I'd say that sounds it's pretty serious. It's controlling your oil flow, I'm sure. And then a 6-2, which would be a port oil control valve. All right, so this is pretty simple just to write these down on a piece of paper and keep them with the rest of your paperwork on your boat. I do, because if something goes wrong, let's put it this way. There is a fellow charter out of Jacksonville that I see all the time. Pretty much does offshore charters. Got twin, what, year old white Suzukis. All right. And one morning he's putting his boat in the water and he turns it, turns his keys on, starts the engine, and I hear this beep, 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 beep. And I said, hey man, what's up? What's going on? You got an alarm going off? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, what's the uh, code? Oh, uh, 3-6. I said, that's your O2 sensor. You got an O2 sensor going bad already? Yeah, I guess. Well, he was lucky because he ran that thing for 15 more trips. And just the other day he told me, yeah, I went and bought one of them uh, O2 sensors and changed it out myself. It's like 200 and something bucks. I said, did you buy a Suzuki one or did you get one just off of Amazon? I got a real Suzuki one. And I said, yeah, for somebody like you and me, you need to undo it, unplug, plug, and move down the road. You're not, you don't got weeks and stuff to sit around, right? So it all turned out that he changed it. He didn't get an Amazon one, which is like 125 bucks. And the next thing you know, he's back on the road. So, but he did it for, it took, I don't know, it took him two months to change it. There could have been serious issues because when mine kind of shit the bed on me, I had serious, serious issues like the engine running like crap, like it's sucking fuel like no tomorrow. And eventually my engine shut down. It wouldn't start. It wouldn't start. And the minute I took it into the mechanic, first thing he said is, well, when you got the alarm, why didn't you come in? And I said, because I had, you know, three book charters that were, you know, let's say $1,800 worth of, $1,400 worth of money that I could not give up. Okay? i got to keep pushing. So I'm going to put a link below to all this that you should keep with you on your boat. If you've got one of these gauges, if you don't have one of these gauges, well, you might want to get one. You can find them used. Believe it or not, the round one was produced, the actual gauge and the way it works, it's a Lowrance. And it's not that great. It's not that great, and that's the reason why I think Suzuki changed it. But now I've ever even heard that the new square gauges aren't that superlative either. But it is what it is. That multi-gauge is going to give you a ton of information. If you've just got a fuel separate fuel gauge, that's fine. But if you've got a, a, a volt gauge and you've got a gas gauge and you've got an RPM gauge, you may seriously... If you've got a Suzuki, and if it's relatively new, if it's old, I wouldn't worry about it. But if it's within a couple years old, I would either find a used one of these gauges or bite the bullet and go get, a, go get one and wire it in and have somebody who knows what they're doing wire it in, if it can be done. I don't know. Like I said, I'm a Suzuki mechanic on YouTube, and that's, not, that's just telling you a lie. I, I, play a, uh, I play a Suzuki mechanic for myself, not you. I get emails all the time. People think I know everything that's going on with Suzuki's. 
I've got a ton of videos about Suzuki maintenance. I got things that keep myself rolling. Okay? So I will put these Suzuki codes that if you don't have them, they're not in your owner's manual. Just so you know, this is not in your owner's manual. So I'll put this in the link below. I'll put it somewhere. Look for it. I will maybe copy this entire thing and put it in the video description and you copy paste it save it to a notepad or something on your computer and you could have it okay so that's just a little useful information it's nice to know that if you have a malfunction what it is because if it's an O2 sensor you can fix it yourself if it's a map sensor you can get one yourself if it's an IAC valve you can get one yourself Okay, if it's uh, air intake, well, then you got something wrong with it sucking air. Okay, so there's certain things, fuel injector. There's things that you might be able to do yourself, unless it's under warranty or something. And then there's other things you don't want to mess with. All right, so that's just from years of Suzuki ownership and having to keep rolling down the road. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for coming up on the Jetty Wolf with me here. I'll show you a picture of my gauge at the end of this video in the on position, and I will be paging through it. Remember, mine is an old style gauge. All right? So stick with it. Wait till I show you this, and that will be the end. So I'll see you on the next one. Here's the general screen that I use, RPM fuel remaining engine temp and engine voltage. There's my analog, or is that digital? Engine voltage, engine temperature, vessel fuel level, my trim. There's fuel flow, fuel remaining, fuel used. Engine hours, Engine diagnostic, vessel fuel level like a regular fuel gauge, and then back to the screen that I use all the time. On your gauge, you will get a alarm come up, and many times it'll be like a little flag coming up right here if I can remember or it's a small window and it'll tell you, let's say, as if it's the, you know, uh, let's say, O2 sensor. It'll go 3-6, 3-6, beep, 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 whatever. Okay, and it'll eventually go away. It doesn't sit there all the time. You turn the engine off, turn it back on. But that's my round Suzuki gauge and how I have this set up. All right, I just wanted to show it to you. Engine diagnostics. I guess if there's an issue, it may show up on this page. All right, so there you go, and thanks for watching.